How do you know the right time to stop your practice at daily? Wilderness Tactical has been around for longer than the gun you're carrying has been, and they have been making high quality products for concealed carriers for literally decades. I wear their low pro belt every year. The webbing is the best in the industry and I won't wear anything else. If you're looking for a good CCW belt, check them out. Hey guys, Brian Hill from The Complete Combatant. Welcome to Suck Last Saturday on Active Self Protection Extra. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I get, as a coach, I get this question, you know, what, how should I structure my workout? Uh, how many reps do I do? How long do I do it for? How many times a week? And if only it was that easy. Um, people that love checklists will, won't really like what I'm going to talk about because there is a cognitive bias, an effect that it works in our brain. It's called the Zygernek effect. And what it means is that we easily remember tasks that are incomplete or have not been finished where we forget the ones that we've completed. That's really good for memory. There's a lot of tasks we do on a daily basis we don't want floating up there. But as a practicer, we can pull this lever to make sure that we get the most out of our practice. So what that means for us is always leave yourself wanting a bit more at practice. Uh, especially for us that are perfectionists, we tend to grind that last rep out. We're gonna get that perfect rep. Now, if you really monitor your progress, what you'll see is you don't get a perfect rep. You spend a lot of effort in it trying to get something that you're driving harder and harder. And what it does is create a lot of tension. What I always do is uh, when I do my drive practice, I work in accuracy and precision mode, I work in speed and efficiency mode, and I end in performance mode. Before I get done with each of those, those tasks, when I feel like I've had a pretty good set and I really want to do a bit more, I stop. And that leaves it open in my memory to come back and use the, the task on. This is a great way to keep not motivation but discipline moving forward because you're always going to be wanting to do a bit more. That search for the ultimate perfect structure, rep, duration is not how human beings learn. Uh, we need novelty and complexity in our environment and we also need to leverage the way that we think and that's taking a, a, a chance on this effect. Now some of you say that's probably not true for me or it doesn't work that way but uh, incomplete tasks tend to prey on us and uh, athletes have been using this for a long time and coaches that are wise don't overtrain their athletes. Uh, I spent some time going to a, a, one of the high level coaching institutes and the number one problem with most everybody was overtraining. Uh, we're energetic, we're driven, so we always want to be in motion towards our task. But most of the assimilation of learning is done while we're not doing the task or while we're sleeping and we always wanna leave it wanting a bit more. That's why taking a day off when you decide to, not because you don't feel like it, but you say, I'm gonna take this day off, especially if the height of your practice or two days off is really good for you. And those of you that have a hard time getting started, if you do just enough and leave yourself wanting a bit more, you'll come back to it time and time again. But if you do it to utter exhaustion and fatigue, you set a lot of failure mechanisms involved like excessive tension, prejudging the outcome, only searching for the outcome instead of staying in the process. This is hard information, guys, I know it is. Uh, you have preferences and biases that work against you on a daily basis. And one thing that uh, your wise inner coach should do is use them to help you perform better, to understand when they're affecting you, and help you interpret the process and the outcome. Keep good records, guys. Do your metrics. Change up your training routine. Variety is really the spice of life in training and don't finish it when you're absolutely fatigued. Finish it when you want a little bit more. I hope that helps get you guys through the next hurdle. It is always difficult. Remember, this is a lifelong process uh, until you decide you don't want to do it anymore at all. All right. Until then, give yourself some grace, work hard on it, use these effects, and you can look it up. It's the Zygernock effect that starts with a Z, and you guys can see some of how these cognitive biases work for us and against us. And a lot of our informational learning is based on some of these biases and they're not really specifically true. Uh, they work in a very generalized environment sometimes. And this is one we can use to our advantage. So I hope that helps you. I'm Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant. And as always, measure, refine, and perform.